Welcome back to my channel. I literally just came back from IFEMA Feria de Madrid where ARCO is taking place. ARCO is the largest art fair in Southern Europe and it is the one single most important event in the art world in Spain. So for those of you who have not visited or who would like to visit, perhaps I'll be showing you this video and I'll give you a sneak peek from the inside of ARCO. Today is their first day opening at 12 at and I went right in in order to show you this and I will just show you the art as it is and the photos and videos I made as objectively as possible because I'm not an art critic. I don't want to um, just judge the artworks. It's not my job. My job is to show you the artworks and the ambient as it is so you can judge and you can decide for yourself if you would like to visit. It's open until 1st of March on Sunday, so there are plenty of time for you to grab a ticket to visit if you wish to do so. And now let's jump right in. 2020 had a very rough start from China, the coronavirus and the art market had been really, really impacted. Actually, every market had been impacted. There is really long lasting, deep impact in everywhere, in everyone's life. And globally now it's not just an epidemic, but a pandemic. And there are new cases popping up everywhere in Europe and I was worried Arco might close because the uh, mobile event in Barcelona had been cancelled last minute and guess what? Arco has been planned since last year, since like September. Galleries had been paying, chosen, they had been like organized and transported their artworks to this event and if they cannot open now, it would be a disaster, not only financially speaking, but also in terms of atmosphere in the cultural world because then guess what most of other events will be cancelled and it will be just more fair or fair and I wouldn't say fair for nothing but yes there are concerns and when I went inside I was personally thinking that people might think I pose a threat because I have a Chinese face and I'm a passport holder, I'm a Chinese national, I'm, yeah, obviously I'm not gonna hide the fact that I'm originally from China and people can fear that I carry something, right? So, I mean, I, I carry a camera. This is as dangerous as it goes. But also I brought my mom with me and she's obviously also a Chinese citizen. And we were like, oh my God, are they gonna treat us differently? But luckily enough, Arco uh, was taking place just as planned and people were super chilled. They were not worried. They were not wearing masks. Only two out of 2000 persons that I've seen wear masks and I guess they obviously had their reasons maybe they want to protect others or protect themselves and just for the precaution and there are little details like the hand sanitizers everywhere in every corner of the art fair so you can feel free to disinfect your hands you know it's just the details that uh, are showing that Arco is trying to cope with the challenge of the global epidemic but nevertheless it's just like any other other times. It is the 39th edition of the art fair. Just like the past 38 years, people were coming, they are coming to say hi, uh, to network, to purchase art, and luckily they were not too much affected by the coronavirus problem. And this year, there are 209 art galleries from more than 30 countries present in this edition, 171 of which make up the general program in addition to curated sections. This year, the theme is called It's Just a Matter of Time, featuring a selection of 16 artists from 13 galleries. The theme is inspired by artist Felix Gonzalez Torres, who passed away at 38 years old or 38 years young. I find it a coincidence because Arco is uh, 39 years birthday, so it has been 38 years since Arco is running in Madrid. And Felix Gonzalez Torres also had a history of his life uh, at 38. So I don't know if it is a coincidence or it is uh, their intention of the curators. Felix obviously was a very established international artist born in Cuba, studied in Madrid, Madrid 
and then worked and lived until he passed away in Miami, in America. So he was a truly international, uh, very uh, iconic artist with a deep connection to the Spanish and Hispanic world. So I would say it's a relevant artist to be honored for this edition. But I do have one small complaint, is that I did not find the curatorial message. Like the theme is, it's just a matter of time. And the fact that Felix passed away from a contagious uh, illness, a disease, that is, I would say, not similar to coronavirus, but I mean, there is somehow a link, and it's just a matter of time and time, death, the inevitable of consequences of life, and everything is kind of connected, but I did not see any message anywhere in these two pavilions. I was literally five hours in and out. I was seeking, but I don't find. Maybe I'm blind and I need new glasses, but I didn't find this message. And I randomly asked a few people in the fair. They're all professionals. Obviously, today is the first day only open for the professionals. They did not see the message either. So it's not just me. I was not alone uh, feeling this way. And I wished to see more curatorial um, message, to see more things, programs, talks that are more relevant to this theme. It's just a matter of time. Because think about it, time is the most important element of our life. It's the thing so linear cannot turn back. It is the most democratic resource. Everybody has 24 hours a day. It is the most scarce resource in the world as well because you cannot turn back the clock. And it's very, very timeless. It's very deep. Right now, many artists in China are making artworks about how they would like to spend their time, the rest of their lifetime, because of the coronavirus. They are stranded at home, or they are in quarantine, or they are stranded ill in the hospital. And the fact that it changed the whole country, or even whole world, how we perceive time and how we would like to spend time. And that, that's why I think this message is even more relevant today. And I would really wish they could push this message through more. Like the other year, it was about Peru. And you see the huge signs is Peru and you know the color, the galleries, the art, and everything was linked more obviously. I find a few pieces of artwork relevant, but I don't really, really, really see a, a curatorial program in there. So that was my complaint. Apart from that, Arco is also trying to push something else new, apart from the hand sanitizer and it's just a matter of time, is they're trying to push a new generation of art galleries and artists. They have a new program that is promoting galleries between two to seven years of history. So you need to be open two years to qualify, but this section is for galleries under seven years. So this is a small window for, let's say, emerging art galleries and young artists they represent. And according to their official communication, that is in order to boost its image as a fair for discovering national and international creative talent. I have a slight problem with the way they put it because they wouldn't really say it out loud if they want to promote an image as a young, new, fair, relevant, cutting edge. They would just do it, right? Like you wouldn't say, I would like to promote my image as a fresh young person. No, you just wear young people's clothes and try to be young, like, you know, put energy in there, do things that young people do. Instead of trying to say it out loud as a way to communicate and to establish yourself as like to boost new things and new blood and new faces, and new talent. You know, the right way to do it is just to do it instead of shouting it out loud. And personally speaking, it is not the first or second time I visited Arco. I was visiting since 2013. It has been a while since I was going there, since I was covering this as a vlogger. And I find that there are a lot of old faces, there are a lot more, more old faces than young faces. And I could see um, the same artists, same galleries, even the same series of art and the same buyers. And I don't really see too much of the fresh, the innovation, you know, the new faces. 
I wouldn't say as good or bad is their choice, right? So they decided to make new things. I would say they could push it a little bit further. And after all, Arco is still, from my point of view, uh, established uh, art fair for more uh, conventionally elitist contemporary art galleries and collectors and artists because there are many parallel art fairs that are more new, emerging, cutting edge, bleeding edge, which I will be covering also in this week. So if you're interested, you can you know click so that you can follow our channel and see other things. Personally speaking, I don't think that fresh blood is fresh enough. When I was there, looking at the old faces, uh, greeting them and seeing them again and again, and I feel a sense of comfort and stability. And maybe right now stability is a good sense because of the global pandemic and the fact that stability is a luxury right now. And before maybe people would say, you know, we want the new, we don't want the old. Maybe now they're coming back to the old and say, you know what, it's not that bad. Let's do it again. So I don't really know uh, after this pandemic how people would do, what kind of art they would purchase. And the new uh, movement of the art market is still pending because we are right now in the middle of it. Maybe in the end of the year, after everything, we look back back into this and we, we say, maybe let's just continue the old way. I don't really know, but I was not personally convinced about the new blood, the new gallery thing, as I see that the majority of the faces, I, I see it from years before, years before, and you know, for good or for bad. Before closing this video, I wanna mention this one booth particularly, because everywhere I go when I visit international art fairs, normally I'll stop over at a Chinese gallery or Chinese artist booth so that I can see how people react to the Chinese contemporary art, which is, you know, kind of different from the other kind of contemporary art. And guess what, this time I didn't even need to look. I see it right there, out loud, shouting blue, and it's the Ivy Way. And you see the name of the artist bigger than anything else. It's the artwork series Zodiac, the 12 animals representing the years. So I'm the year of ox, you might be the year of the dragon, the snake, or the rat, or the pig, or I mean, no offense, it's just different animals representing different years. If you're interested in which year you are, you can Google it or you can leave me a message so I can tell you which animal you have, which zodiac. So those are the uh, Ivy Waste zodiacs. And I find a lot of people were so, so into it and they were like gathering in front of it, taking pictures, selfies, interviews. And Ivy Wei, as a, the, one of the most internationally renowned Chinese contemporary artists, does attract the attention. My mom was asking me like, is Ivy Wei here? And I was like, no, it's not, he's not here. <laughs> he would not be here. Right across the Ivy Wei's booth, there is another booth that is uh, very beautiful. It's a dream of the artist that he would dream an old apartment with old door and windows and raining and this moonlight at night. I find it very very nicely staged and the mood was very impactful so just to have a pick. All right that's all for today Arco 2020. What do you think? Leave me a message. I'll be covering other art fairs this week such as hybrid drawing room or vanity, maybe other art fairs like Art Mad or Just Mad if I have the time. And that's all for today and see you in the next video.